Hi there, people of the internet. It's Stingley here, back again with another Game Jam devlog. This time we're looking at the Ukraine Winter Jam. Uh, this is a month-long jam, and as you can see down here, um, I'm already a few days behind, and there's a pretty good reason for that. I kind of like to check out a jam's theme before I actually commit to doing it, um, and the theme for this jam is living and fighting in the cold and dark. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, I mean, that's a theme. Anyway, so I thought about it for a little while and I thought, well, maybe I should make a simple RTS. I've not tried making an RTS before, um, so it's going to be an interesting challenge. And I've got a month to do it, so I've got a decent amount of time. It would obviously be a winter themed RTS and the sort of with the same, uh, you know, building and uh, unit creation that you would normally get I suppose in, in, in an RTS but um, I thought I'd give it a go. So this is what I've got so far. Um, I have um, some lovely good icons here, some green ones and some blue ones and some red ones and basically what you're looking at is a base scene, base um, unit if you like, uh, which I cannot select and this uh, white box that I'm drawing over the top here uh, obviously is something that I'm rendering to screen. The red version of this are inherited scenes, and they are enemy units. Again, I obviously can't select those, but the green ones are my units, and I can select those. Um, so single left click will select when you drag, and then um, if you right click, the units move to the location that you specify. Um, I've got a couple of black walls here, and that's basically for object avoidance. Uh, so if my units are one side of my walls and I right click, you can see it goes around and navigates two things properly. Um, if I select multiple units, they move as you would expect, and it can select this sort of thing, and they can all move at the same sort of time. So yeah, it's um, it's not looking too bad so far. Obviously, the first thing I need to do, or the next thing I need to do, is uh, get them to detect when there is an enemy within their range and start attacking that enemy. So that's going to work what I'm going to be working on right now. Now obviously I could tackle this um, by just simply detecting when a player or sorry, detecting when a, an enemy is within range of my units and um, triggering some sort of attack um, from that point in time. But I'm really curious to use this Behave plugin by Bitbrain. Um, this is the version for Godot 3.x, which is the version of Godot I'm using. There is in fact a uh, master branch version of it for Godot 4, but uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not using that yet. So I will should be using the 3.x version, and I'm going to see if I can get it to um, get it to work. I, I kind of like the idea of using a behavior tree. It's again not something I've done before, so it's going to be an interesting challenge. I've decided to tackle this slightly differently and go for. Well, what I thought was going to be a slightly simpler scenario. Um, so my enemy unit now has um, a bunch of behave logic here and you can see um, basically the idea is that it will either wait um, if there are no buildings available or it's going to go and attack a building. So that's what this logic here is doing. So first thing it's going to do is it checks to see if buildings exist that is inverted so therefore no buildings exist it will call this rest action and this rest action is simply going to check to see whether the unit is already resting and uh, if the unit is not already resting it will rest the unit and that basically just calls the idle animation the idle state I'll show you that in a second so assuming that there are buildings for the unit to attack it will call this attack building sequence uh, which is going to trigger these two actions here. It's going to walk to the closest building and then it's going to attack the building. So this code has been largely ripped from um, Bitbrain's um, excellent repository uh, and adapted slightly. So you can see here I on each tick it's looking for a closest building and there basically will return um, success if it 
has if the actor has reached that building and if the actor hasn't reached that building then it's going to get the actor to move to the that building's position so once it's reached that building so that's the walk to closest building once it's reached that the attack building script kicks in and uh, you can see here it's basically checking for the building, checking for the various different statuses, whether the action has been performed or queued, um, and then down here somewhere we start the action for the actor, and in this scenario it's simply just attacking the building. So the actor is going to trigger the attack animation, and then that, in turn, eventually will damage the building. So when I run the game now, you can see my two units are moving towards my big blue building in the top left corner. And as they reach it, it triggers the attacking animation. And once the building is destroyed, they both revert back to idle. And this is great, apart from the fact that there are obviously a couple of problems. The first problem is the fact that it is a single point in space for the building. And consequently, the second unit can't actually get anywhere near it so it doesn't actually ever trigger the attack animation. And the next problem is, um, when there are more than one building, you can see it never ends. <laughs> uh, they just get stuck attacking the first building because the second building exists, but they don't know where it is. So yeah, it turns out the BitBrain's code yeah, I mean, it works brilliantly for if there is one unit doing one specific set of tasks, but when there is more than one unit or more than one objective, uh, it doesn't work so well. So I've got to work out a way of adapting that. The following day. So it turns out that I am I'm actually an idiot. Um, it was quite simple. My building has a, uh, a method that returns whether it has been destroyed or not. It doesn't actually do a queue free. So what was happening was the uh, the AI logic was looking for the nearest building, finding the one that um, was there but hidden, and still just continuing to attack it. You can see here in my um, in my house scene, as the building takes damage, it reduces the amount of hit points, and then there is a method called is destroyed that basically looks to see whether the hit points are less than or equal to zero and returns true or false accordingly. In the enemy unit. AI script here we have this uh, this node which is walk to closest building and in this um, action there's a method for finding the closest building and basically this line here didn't exist um, so consequently it was looping through all the buildings that were uh, in the scene and just finding the closest one and uh, and then consequently attacking that so Turns out if you put a block of code in that takes it uh, takes into account whether the building actually exists or not um, It works much better. I've been working on adding in the ability for the AI to attack the player um, So what I've done is I've added a, a really big area to D node here And this basically collides only with the player units layer. I've added uh, a new selection node into my AI that basically will prioritize attacking the player unit over attacking the building. And I've also done a bit of refactoring because actually um, it doesn't matter if it's a player unit or if it is uh, an enemy unit, so long as um, the, 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 the AI is basically exactly the same. So there is a new script that detects, um, well, basically returns success if there are any detected bodies within the actor. The actor itself is always a unit so, um, no, the actor itself in this scenario is always an enemy unit, let's be specific. So I've got a new method on here for getting the detected bodies. And this basically is looking to see whether or not the unit is not destroyed, uh, not making that the same mistake again, and we'll return that array back to the, uh, the script that's calling it. So the AI returns success when it detects a unit and then it's going to walk to the closest unit and this is exactly the same as the um, as the building script actually. Almost exactly the same. I just need to change it slightly um, because I'm looking obviously in this scenario for only the, the, the closest ones, the ones that are actually within the area of detection. And then I have my attack target script which uh, is exactly the same as the attack building script, so I've refactored it, 
uh, and I simply pass into it whatever the blackboard target is. And with that, what you end up with is uh, it, it's kind of nice. So now my enemy unit will automatically um, go to the building because it couldn't find a player uh, unit initially. Now it's moving towards this player unit, um, but if I move it out the way, it will lock on to the other player unit and attack that. Then it will move towards the one that's running away from it because it's still within its area of influence and it will go and attack that. And then once it's killed that unit, it's going to go back to its original um, intention of killing the other house. I mean, how cool is that? I've now added the uh, the same sort of attack AI, but to the player nodes. So now when the enemy gets within their range, they start moving towards the enemy and they will actually attack the enemy, which kind of works to a degree, um, except for the fact that they kind of do this sort of swaying backwards and forwards, which is kind of annoying. And also, the enemy always wins, even though there's two players. So, not entirely sure what's going on there, but um, yeah, it kind of works. I fixed the problem, I think. Um, what was happening was, as the player was reaching its target, so it was immediately triggering the idle animation. Uh, now it doesn't do that, and they will still do their silly dance, but now the player can actually win because they're actually attacking the enemy. But I'm, I'm pretty pleased with that progress. Um, at the end of this, it goes straight into this sort of still attacking state, but it's not animating. And also now, because I've removed the, um, the condition that will set the player back to be idle, uh, they're never idle ever again. So I've obviously got to fix that. But yeah, you can actually now have units attacking other units. And if they don't do that, uh, they're going to attack buildings. And yeah, really pleased. So um, pretty good progress. Okay, we're a couple of days later now. Um, I've fixed a few more bits and bobs. Um, for starters, I've now made it so that the units will target each other irrespective of whereabouts they are. So as the player units move around, so the, um, the enemy units will follow them and they don't sort of do that rubber banding yo-yo attack thing. Um, obviously I fixed the idle issue. I've now got a bit of UI going on at the top, so um, the game will generate gold, one gold per person that you have control over, and it decreases the amount of food you've got based on the units as well. I've also got uh, a rudimentary build menu, and here, I mean this doesn't work in terms of decreasing the amount yet, but I can now select my house, and I can build my house wherever I want. Um, if it's an invalid location it becomes red the uh, enemies don't interact with it until it's been put down and then they will um, you'll also notice that my uh, my two guards here I mean I've, I've beefed up their attack power so they're, they're just wiping out the enemies really quickly um, but they will basically stay exactly where they have been placed up until the point that they detect an enemy they'll attack that enemy and then they'll go back to where they were placed so yeah that's um that's working really well as well i thought it was about time i made my game look a little bit prettier so i've um gone to kenny's website and i found this pretty sweet um asset pack which i'm going to drop into my game okay so a few minutes later this is now what i've got so um, I've just dropped in this sort of island mass, if you like, and everything works as it did before, basically. Um, however, there's a bit of a problem. Uh, the theme of this jam is living and dying in the cold and dark, and this is not cold, uh, nor is it dark, so I need to do something about that. Um, so that's what I'm going to sort out now. Okay, quick recolor later. This is what we've got, so I've sort of properly desaturated it all now um, my selection doesn't look very good obviously because it's white on a very light grey but yeah it kind of feels a bit more bleak and desolate which is kind of uh, kind of the vibe I'm going for so yeah pretty good I'm playing around with some lights and some darkness and I kind of like the way this 
fields, um, the the enemies aren't lit. Only the player units that you can control are lit, and the buildings that you have are lit. Um, that's a good point, actually. How does this? Yeah, okay. I need to obviously turn the light off when you, it's not been built. But yeah, it kind of it kind of works. The problem with it is my lights are additive, and as you can see, when um, when one of my units dies, the brightness. Um, dims which isn't a problem more of a problem is when they're all bunched up um, it's really bright and I've got to try and work out how to remove that um, that that sort of really bright high spot that you get because I don't like it very much <laughs> so, but yeah it, yeah it kind of works it's it's not too bad I like it I like the idea of it I've made some more visual improvements to the game um, I've chosen a different font you can see up here. I'm also tracking uh, population now as well. My build menu has had a bit of a facelift and you can see I've actually got actual things in here now, um, including the barracks, which you can't build. Um, it won't let you, obviously. If you build a house now uh, and you position it wherever you like, population increases. You can also see that my uh, units are now spawning outside the front of the town hall. Now, at the moment, they're spawning as um, attacking units. They won't do. They'll just spawn as villagers. And also, my timings are all off at the moment. Um, they won't spawn this quickly. But yeah, it's, um, it's coming along quite nicely. I've added a snow effect. Uh, and the idea is going to be the fact that when it gets really cold... Um, it will um, it, it'll snow significantly faster. You also just saw everybody die, and that's because I've run out of food. Um, there is actually a percentage chance that they will lose a certain amount of hit points, but they obviously all just triggered that at the same time. And when um, the food is in a negative state, it um, it will stop spawning new villagers. So that's going to be a um, a thing for the player to get over. But yeah, this is the end of week one. I've got three more weeks to go, um, but I'm pretty pleased with my progress so far. The uh, the house assets and the building assets and stuff need to all be sort of recolored and to fit in with the aesthetic and things. And obviously, you need to trigger the game over state when the town hall gets destroyed. Um, but yeah, week one all done. If you have been watching, thanks very much. If you would uh, consider liking the video and maybe subscribing to the channel. That would be great and uh, hopefully I will see you in next week's update.